before you start learning R, you need to first carry out two necessary installations. For starters, to program in R, sure enough, you need to have R installed. Then you will need RStudio, one of the most well-known IDEs that will be hosting our R programs. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment, and by Integrated Development Environment I mean the set of tools provided to you in order to swimmingly develop an R program. For instance, some basic features include an editor with code coloring that very easily help you spot keywords, variables and other types of R objects that you will be learning in the next videos, also code autocompletion and debugging. You will be able to acknowledge the power of all of these features as you become more proficient in using R. Before we begin with installations, notice that the order of installations matters. You first need to install R before you install RStudio. RStudio will search for an R installation on your machine before it is installed. First things first though. Let's install both software programs first for Windows and then for Mac. Let's first go to R's official webpage, r-project.org. Then you follow the download link on the upper part of the page. Next screen shows the available mirrors from which you can download the software. You can choose the mirror of the country you live in or one nearby and follow the respective link. Let me follow Greece's link since I live in Greece. Um, next step is to choose the operating system of your machine. Now you choose Windows. In the next screen, uh, click on the Base link and then you simply select the Download R link. At the time of this video recording, R's latest release version is 3.5.2. Now you save the file and then double click on it to execute the downloaded uh, .exe file. Now a new pop-up window appears that gives us the chance to set the installation language. Here I choose English. Next pop-up window is about the terms and conditions of using R under its uh, GANU public license. You simply move on by pressing next as you will do for the next few windows regarding the selection of components, uh, the setting of startup options, the start menu folder and the additional tasks. Now R is installed and you are one installation before you are ready to go. It's RStudio's turn now. First you need to visit RStudio's official webpage. Then choose the Products tab and select RStudio. You find the Download the RStudio Desktop link for your laptop or desktop PC. In the next window you choose to download the free version and finally you pick the Windows installer. You choose to save it somewhere on your disk that you can easily access and then wait until it's downloaded. After downloading it, you simply uh, double click on it and choose next for the remaining screens until the finish button appears. The only thing that remains is to actually find and open RStudio. You go to the start menu and then you find RStudio and load it. Now you are in front of RStudio's environment where you will be working throughout this series. As you can see there are four panels. The two ones on the left, above and below, will concern us most of the time since these are the places where you will be writing your R code. For the first few videos you will be working on the lower left panel, the so-called uh, R console, and after you start feeling a bit more comfortable with the language, we will start writing our first R programs on the upper left panel and run them from there. I will prepare a video for explaining how to use the upper left panel when the time is right. Uh, the remaining two panels have special functionality that you don't have to worry about right now. But just keep in mind that as we move along this series, I will help you discover some of the benefits of using them while programming. So far with Windows, let's head to Mac's installations. 
Installing R for Mac does not make much of a difference. Uh, you go to R's official page, you follow the same download link, and then you choose the mirror you want to download the software from. You would usually want to find a mirror from your country or a neighbor one. I chose the Greek mirror in Crete as I live in Greece. In the next screen, I choose the download R for Mac link. After that, I pick the latest release package. At the day of recording, this could be R3.5.2. Um, uh, Now R is downloaded and next step is to install it. Press continue. Then agree to the terms of the license agreement. Choose your disk if you are the only user of your Mac and install. Insert your password to allow the installation by entering your password and then the installation begins. You wait a couple of minutes until the window with a successful installation pops up. Lastly, let's install RStudio for Mac. You first need to go to RStudio's webpage, choose RStudio from the Products tab, then uh, RStudio Desktop and download. Finally, you click on the free version link and then on the corresponding install installer for Mac. After having downloaded the DMG file, you simply click on it and let it do the installation. Finally, you drag the RStudio icon on the Applications folder and you're ready to go. Now, to open RStudio, you click on its icon and you are in front of RStudio environment that is identical for both Windows and Mac. As you can see, there are four panels. The two panels on the left, above and below, will be the ones that you will be working on since these are the places where you will be writing your R code. For the first few videos, you will be working on the lower left panel, the so-called R console. And after you start feeling a bit more comfortable with the language, uh, we will start writing our first R programs on the upper left panel and run them from there. I will prepare a video for explaining how to use the upper left panel when the time is right. The rest two panels include a number of useful features that you will discover as we move along the videos of the playlist. Now you are set to go and enter your first R code chunks. And don't forget to also subscribe to the channel by pressing the relevant button on the video or on channel's homepage. And then, in order to get updates when new videos are released, you need to activate the bell notification that stands on channel's homepage.